how you doing? <laughs> Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Oh, stop it. Thank you. Welcome. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Facebook. I, uh, I hear it's going to be big. I'm on the ground floor myself. But hey, <laughs> who's ready to make America great again? Uh, is that... Okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> that was supposed to be ironic. I, I... <sighs> Really, the, the election is six days away. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I'm... Thank my... Thank you. <laughs> but are you guys okay? Because my sphincter is about to explode. That's all I can say. I always said this would be a tight race. <laughs> you know what? I, I mean, <laughs> it, I have never seen an election quite like this. Uh, on one side, a hysterical woman, and on the other side, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I, <laughs> it, it just can't happen, right? But it could! But it can't, because I like Earth. I do. I like living on it. I like the way the planet spins. And yet, you know what? Uh, I, just in case Trump wins, I've built a bomb shelter. <laughs> but Hillary will probably win, so I, it can be converted into a wine cellar. That's... <laughs> but I must admit, I never thought the October surprise would be Anthony Weiner's dick again. That... that... <laughs> By the way, if Trump wins, I'm gonna fucking kill Anthony Weiner. That's what I'm gonna do. The cock that ended the world. <laughs> I mean, man, Hillary, this chick has had bad luck with dicks, hasn't she? Real. Don't be fucking politically correct on me tonight. I know this is Los Angeles. I could give a fucking shit about you, his hipster. Seriously, this chick has had trouble with dick. I'll say it a hundred times. If she's not a lesbian already, she should be. That's all I'm saying about her experience with cock. But, uh, but I, you know, I, I hope that when we look back on this, it's going to be like, you know, Trump was like, Y2K. <laughs> right? And we thought it was going to be a disaster. We shit our pants, <laughs> and then it was a bunch of nothing, you know? But who knows? Even if he loses his army of whiny little bitches. Thank you. Boy, these guys are on cue. I swear to God there was no rehearsal for that, right? <laughs> but he, these, these people are crazy. They think if Hillary is elected, this is the end of civilization, right? They're so brainwashed that we're living in this country of disaster where there's always a cold knife at your heart and a brown dick at your lips. <laughs> Whoa, the guy. <laughs> Which a lot of people in this neighborhood like. That's all I can say about that. But really, I mean... <laughs> It's not just Trump, it's everybody in the Republican Party always talking about this America that is completely fictitious, this Fox News America that just keeps their audience indoors. <laughs> ISIS and criminals and Mexican rapists, they're all going to kill you. And we're powerless to do anything about it because the police have been compromised by Hillary's emails. <laughs> I mean, these people, beyond ideology, which they would have to, like, get smart to have any, <laughs> they're just hysterics, right? They're hysterics. I mean, Trump said the other day, it's so hard to say, this is the stupidest thing he's ever said, <laughs> but he seems to be testing people to see how stupid can I possibly be? He said Hillary is going to allow 650 million immigrants into 
right? In, in the first week. That is an intelligence test right there. I mean, you're either a person who thinks or not, if you hear that. I mean, it took us 240 years to get to a population of 320. <laughs> She's gonna triple it in a week. It's just gonna be tumbleweed through Guatemala. I mean, this is... The week before, Donald Trump said ISIS is not only gonna take over their part of the world, they're gonna take over America. Yes, ISIS is gonna take over America. They're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Get in their 1970 Toyota pickup trucks <laughs> and drive them across the ocean and set up a caliphate in <laughs> San Bernardino. <laughs> it's, it's so... De right. I, I, when Trump talks about ISIS, you know, he's like, I, will, I, would, I, would, I would wipe them out very quickly. <laughs> very quickly. I Right, they just give up because you're Donald Trump. I would like to go on jihad, <laughs> but not against Donald Trump. Our vengeful desert god is powerless against his great deals. <laughs> really? Are we really living through this? That's what. As depressing as Donald Trump is, I have to say. I mean, it's the country that half of them are going to vote for this fucking lunatic that really has me. I mean, I know sane people are outraged about, you know, his latest nonsense about how he would not concede the election. If I don't catch the bouquet, I'm going to firebomb this fucking wedding. But excuse me, I'm still on Pussygate. I'm still on Pussygate. I am incensed that America swallowed this so quickly. Really. I remember when it happened. It was like a month ago, because it was. I remember that weekend. Everybody was talking about, this is it. This is it. You know what? Mike Pence will have to take over the party. I mean, Republicans were jumping off ship. You know, it was just like, no. It took them a, a weekend to absorb this. Even the responsible Republicans like Paul Ryan and John McCain, they're like, well, it's okay. It's okay to insult Mexicans and blacks and Muslims and women and the handicapped and war heroes and the Pope. <laughs> but leave Nancy O'Dell's pussy out of this. That... <laughs> we can go no farther with this man. But then, you know, they all fucking got together and decided GOP stands for grab our pussies. <laughs> I mean, Donald Trump put out a statement. He said, if anyone was offended, if, if, if any of you prudes out there don't like a complete stranger grabbing your vagina. <laughs> Hi, Don Trump. Nice to meet you. Well, you've got a nice firm snatch there. It's great to meet people like that with a firm snatch. I mean, we have absorbed this way too quickly. You know, I mean, we have a tape. It's not hearsay. We saw, heard this tape of, of Donald Trump saying to Billy Bush, his rapist wingman. <laughs> He's like Igor to the evil, you know, tic tac, sir. <laughs> you know, would you like a tic tac, sir? Are you planning to? I mean, <laughs> this is insane. We have a guy on tape who is saying, you know what? Give me a tic tac, Igor, because. Uh... When I see a hot chick, I can't control myself. You know what? I'm just attracted to beauty like a magnet. And you know what? When you're a star, they'll let you do anything. They'll let you grab their pussy. Okay, I have two thoughts about this. One, you kiss Putin's ass with that mouth? <laughs> and also, Republicans, you've... 
you are not sending us your best, okay? <laughs> They're rapists. Uh... <laughs> they... You know what? They're rapists. They do coke before debates. <laughs> And some of them, <laughs> I'm sure, are good people, but... Okay, not rape exactly, but, you know, I'm not saying he put sleeping drugs in someone's drink, although that would explain Dr. Ben Carson. <laughs> oh, really? No wonder I don't play this room. It's too politically correct. <laughs> No, I mean, Republicans are amazing. The way they will meet in their secret lair beneath the volcano. <laughs> and just get their talking point together. I mean, it was really only a few days before they were like, okay, this is locker room talk, right? That's what we're gonna say. It's just it's locker room talk, it, you know. Folks, I've been in locker rooms. I'm not a jock, but I've been in locker rooms. I've been a guy my whole life, a heterosexual man. Locker room talk is like, boy, I'd like to have sexual intercourse with her. <laughs> I'd sure like to see the look on her face when I give her a good orgasm. Okay, that... <laughs> Not you specifically, sir. I, and, and women I was talking about, but I thank you for the sentiment. Um, it's very encouraging when you hear that from the stage. But this is not what Donald Trump was saying. It wasn't like, I'd like to hypothetically do this. It's like, this is what I do. This is my practice. And give me a Tic Tac, Igor, because I'm about to do it again. That's different. You know, I mean, Anderson Cooper asked him three times at the, dip, like, Jesus. <laughs> three times before the cock crows. Did you actually do this? Poor Anderson Cooper. He hasn't been made to talk about pussy this much his whole life. <laughs> but... <laughs> But really, <laughs> he kept asking him, to his great credit, you know, do you, did you actually, no. Of course, Donald Trump, the greatest liar in the world, says no. And then he's outraged when women come forward and say, no, this is exactly what he did. How dare you claim I did the things I claim I do? <laughs> Who are you going to believe, me or me? <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Donald Trump's excuse that they all swallowed again only a month ago is that, well, I was, I don't do this. I was just, I was just saying it to impress Igor, <laughs> which I find even more disturbing than the act itself. But, you know, 12 women have come forward now. Miss Finland last week came forward and said he grabbed her ass. Donald Trump responded. He said, her ass is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met my hand. <laughs> and I'm suing Finland. <laughs> this, 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 this man, Donald Trump, this thing, must look in the mirror and see Ryan Gosling. I mean, that's... Be you know what, because like, his thing about walking into the beauty pageants backstage, and he has this idea in his head that they love this, when these chicks are like this waddling sack of shit <laughs> with the comb over from a cashier at a $5 motel. And he thinks they like him. You know, his whole defense in this is that, uh, you know, he said it many times, you know, fuck, you know, wouldn't be my first choice. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't waste a Tic Tac on her if you know what I'm saying. I mean, the hypocrisy of the Republican Party. If Obama was caught on tape, you, can you imagine if Barack, Ob if there was an old tape of Barack Obama saying, hey, 
give me a tech tick man because you know i like to kiss and grab the pussies of <laughs> women i don't know and you know what when you're a community organizer they <laughs> they just let you do it they let you do anything i mean trump's apologist there's this Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions, his big ally in the Senate, and they asked him about this, you know, sexual assault. He said, I think that's a stretch. Okay, and the interviewer said, really, grabbing a woman's vagina without her permission is not sexual assault? He said, I think it would depend on the circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine a lot of, like, say a pussy's about to fall off a cliff. <laughs> You're going to want to grab that pussy without a lot of politically correct nonsense preventing you from saving a life. I mean, that's obvious to people. I mean, do the Republicans know women can vote now? You know, <laughs> it, <laughs> it's... You know, I mean, if you live in a small town, I guess you can avoid blacks and Mexicans, but you're going to run into some women. <laughs> you just are going to run into some women. What do they say to them? I mean, these people who, for a living, lie for Donald Trump on television, his flying monkeys you know, Kellyanne Conway and Mike Pence and Rudy Giuliani and Newt Gingrich and Chris Christie, his morbidly obese companion animal. <laughs> don't they get tired? Don't get don't they get tired of phone calls? <laughs> Are you sitting down? <laughs> yeah, he, ju um, he just fucked a pie. Okay, he, yeah, he was at his rally and he took his tiny cock out and he, he, he fucked a pie. Okay. Uh, oh, and now he's talking about it. He's saying, uh, before this, no one was talking about pie fucking. <laughs> uh, he's the greatest pie, pie fucker in the world and he's getting a lot of credit for it. So they meet and they're like, okay, Kellyanne, you talk about how Lincoln used to fuck pies. And uh, Steve Cortez, you go out there and say, this raises an important issue. That, I love that. That's what the Republicans always say whenever Donald Trump says shit they can't do. He raises an important issue. I don't agree. I don't agree that we should get drunk, blindfold ourselves, and drive with our feet. <laughs> but he raises an important issue about driving with our feet. Have you ever seen a Donald Trump rally? I mean, first of all, he takes great pride in the fact that he doesn't use a teleprompter. He doesn't want to alienate his base by reading. <laughs> you know. I mean, that, when I see that hat, make America great again, I always think for his crowd, a little wordy. <laughs> Are they really getting through all of that? Make America! I'll read it tomorrow. I... <laughs> Next time he runs, it's just going to say, Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! Yes, that's how I think. That man is expressing me exactly. He says what my brain is farting. <laughs> but, okay. So, he, he's got this teleprompter. And, you know... <laughs> He doesn't usually use a teleprompter. When he does, you can tell it's new to him and that he never saw it before. Because he'll like get to the set end of a sentence and go, so true. <laughs> so true. That is so, I mean, whatever I just said, which I wrote myself, is so true. That's. But. <laughs> So his rallies always begin with, you know, like 10 minutes on his general greatness. And then it moves to a completely fact-free <laughs> assessment of our nation's problems and his always constitutionally impossible solutions. 
you know, he, you know this. He, he says, you know, we should repeal Obamacare and re replace it with something terrific. <laughs> People are voting for this. Something terrific. Something terrific. Why didn't Obama think of that? See, I. Because he's a Kenyan socialist. That's why he doesn't want to make America terrific. But, you know, it's not about policy, this campaign. It's about a feeling, right? And, wh and what is that feeling? Fear. That Fear, yes. But also, white men have gotten a raw deal in this country. <laughs> That's really what the, you know, everything is rigged. The elections are rigged, and the debates were rigged, and the primaries were rigged. Fuck, when are white men born to great wealth going to catch a break in this country? <laughs> when <laughs> are they going to get a place at the table? Everybody, you know, and, and I used to look at Trump and think, well, how could he get any votes? He's such a whiny little bitch. Because that's who his fans are. These white men sitting at the end of the bar, crabbing about how we're not winning anymore because their dick doesn't work. <laughs> and everyone is always pushing us around, Mexicans and the Chinese and women and blacks who get all the breaks with reverse racism. That's how they like him. They don't want him presidential. Can he, can he morph into something who's pre presidential? For about half a day, he can be slightly less menopausal. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he likes it. They asked him once about this. At a press conference, he actually said, I am me. I am me. <laughs> Thanks, Tarzan. That's such a... <laughs> Even Melania was like, your English not too good, daddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love Melania. Don't you love Melania? She's a good kind of immigrant. The kind who gets here on a supermodeling visa, as immigrants should. Why can't they all do it that way? Like it says on the Statue of Liberty, give me your tired, your poor, your naked lying on a rug. <laughs> the good immigrants, the one who will do the jobs Americans don't want to do, like marrying Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, Oh, it's exhausting making fun of Donald Trump, <laughs> but it's so enjoyable. But um, now he's a funny guy, right? He hates immigrants, but he married two. They seem like nice ladies, but I swear to God, somewhere there is a Mexican woman <laughs> hiding in the back of a chicken truck, sneaking into this country, thinking, at least I didn't have to blow Donald Trump. <laughs> So, it's, it's, it's depressing that that guy could win, and he could win. I've said this, no, this, I want to fucking kick liberals in the teeth when living in their own little bubble. Yes, he could win. He, first of all, this is all the news today. Get off angry birds. <laughs> He could win. Are you fucking kidding me? This is well within the margin of pants shitting. And I will tell you... <laughs> and I will tell you why. If you watch the people who they interview talking about why they love Donald Trump so much, here are the reasons they give. First of all, he's rich, so automatically he's a genius. I know what he says is completely batshit crazy, but it's coming out of the mouth of the rich guy. It must be true. That's America, folks. Uh, Second of all, they say he's one of us. <laughs> yeah, not that comforting, okay? That's not what I'm looking for. It reminds me of that, remember that ad in 2008? Who do you want answering the phone at 3 in the morning? Not someone who's in a Twitter war with Demi Lovato. <laughs> <laughs> And by the 
the way, morons, he's not one of us. Right now, he's in his golden penthouse fucking screwing his trophy wife on sheets made of steak. <laughs> he's not one of you. And those are those aren't the, those are two arguments they have. Here's the one that they really love to trot out. He's going to shake things up. Oh, great! That's what you need. Somebody just to shake things up. That way you don't have to think about anything. Just someone who will shake things up. A great Dane introduced into a toddler's birthday party <laughs> is a <laughs> terrific solution as a metaphor for our nation's pride. You're going to shake things up. Soccer is boring. Let's add handguns. That would shake things up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How about this argument I hear? Well, he's going to have Mike Pence by his side. <laughs> Mike Pence. How very brave of you. <laughs> to boo Mike Pence in West Hollywood. I, you're my heroes. That's all I have to say is you're my heroes. No. <laughs> Mike Pence, he always looks to me like the guy the airlines hire to play the captain in the <laughs> pre-flight video, you know. Captain Mike Pence will get you where you're going. <laughs> Mike Pence, evangelical Christian, always talking about Don this good man. How can this guy sleep with himself at night? And Mike Pence, you know, is a global warming denier, uh, an evolution denier, a guy who thinks you can pray away the gay, passed a law in Indiana about how women who have abortions should have to have a funeral for the fetus, and he's the sane one on the ticket. I remember when Donald Trump was going through the Pussygate weekend, and they were talking about replacing him. The Republicans are all debating. Well, we could get rid of the pussy grabber and replace him with the fetus funeral guy. <laughs> and by the way, there's no replacing Donald Trump, okay? You handcuffed yourself to this dead hooker. <laughs> You're going to have to drag him to the finish line. <laughs> How about this argument for Donald Trump? He must be... Okay, he's got great kids. <laughs> I know, his two sons, douchebag von fuckface Trump, <laughs> and Thurston shitbag the third. They're not great kids. And then, of course, Ivanka. Oh, 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 precious, perfect Ivanka. The Marilyn Munster <laughs> of the Trump family. Be nice to Ivanka. She's our only hope. Because she seems like she actually knows rationality, but she's his kid, and she's the only one who can get through him. I mean, you know he loves her. If he's going to do something fucking nutty, we're going to depend on Ivanka to go into that bedroom. Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, you have to apologize for that tweet where you, where you called Angela Merkel a cunt. You have to apologize, Daddy. Daddy, don't nuke Finland. I know. I mean, Hillary may have thirty thousand erased emails. This chick has thirty thousand. <laughs> repressed memories. <laughs> but you know, <sighs> Trump voters, really? Not even the guy who says he wants to fuck his daughter. This is, this is not a, a, a deal breaker for you. I mean, what does it take? A, a racist, a liar, a tax cheat, a draft dodger, a deadbeat, a Russian agent, and a rapist. You know we're a nuclear power, right? I mean, th these are red flags. I've been trying to point this out every week. You know, little red flags about a person when you're voting. Like, how about 
the fact that he tweets at like three in the morning <laughs> nasty shit. Okay, you know, we all have our ways of getting off to sleep. I jerk off. <laughs> but that's positive. <laughs> Happy thoughts, you know, orgasm into sleep. This psycho tweets, no, you're a disaster, you're low energy, sap. <laughs> what sort of psycho is at that frame of mind when he's trying to get off into sleep? Okay, how about this as a red flag? He doesn't know anything. <laughs> no? This used to be a thing, knowing things. He doesn't, he doesn't know anything. He's always saying, we got to find out what's going on. <laughs> we know what's going on. You have no idea what's going on. He, he, he doesn't read, apparently. Everything he says, well, a lot of people are saying. A lot of people are saying? A passing mental patient whispered in my ear, I, I've got a base national policy on that. I, he doesn't know anything. I, he, he has not apparently even watched a Schoolhouse Rock video <laughs> on the American government and how it works. He, he didn't know what Brexit was. He didn't know what the Kurds were. Uh, <laughs> he didn't know uh, the, what the nuclear triad was. He's going to learn all this when he's president. <laughs> He'll be like a baby with a mobile over his head that he's learned. Uh. Three branches of government. Ah, that's interesting. And he, <laughs> he's a crazy person. I mean, you know, that to me is the biggest red flag emotionally. It is a five-year-old America is considering putting in the White House. A five-year-old. Someone who, you know, you're the puppet. <laughs> right? Someone who's always, I know I am, but what are you? He's an SNL character. That's what he reminds me of. Somebody, whenever you say anything critical, he says, I'm the best at it. <laughs> oh, I think I have the best temperament. He said the best temperament. <laughs> he has the impulse control of a grease fire. <laughs> the best temperament. He said he was the best baseball player. He said he was the most presidential except for Lincoln. <laughs> he... <laughs> He once said, nobody knows more about taxes in the history of the world. <laughs> you know, because we've studied that. He said, nobody knows the Bible more than nobody. The Bible. Nobody respects women more than President Pussy Grabber. Let me tell you. I mean, everybody has something about them that, you know, is their little expertise. If you bring up the Beatles, I might say, nobody knows more about the Beatles. But that's one thing. This guy, no matter what you said. <laughs> hey, Donald, you ever, ever do a magic trick? I am the greatest magician in the world. <laughs> <laughs> what about spelunking? Uh, I am the greatest. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the exploration of caves. Nobody has better caves. <laughs> People call me a Donald, that's a fantastic property, that cave you have. I, I mean, don't, how can we see this and other people can't? That's what's so sad about what's going on in this country. You know, this person, and I say that loosely. <laughs> you know, the original sin that they should have stopped this at was when he was a birther. The reason he sued me because I made fun of him for being a birther by saying his father was actually an orangutan. <laughs> but that's the original sin, and all the Republican Party is complicit in that. They all say some version of what Ted Cruz said. You know, they have this idea in their head. This is a quote from Ted Cruz. He said, Obama could have been a unifying leader, but he made decisions that inflamed racial tensions. Oh, yes, yeah, so true. Like, like staying black it was a terrible decision Obama made. <coughs> ben Stein, you know Ben Stein, one of 
one of America's smart, stupid people. He said uh, once, Barack Obama is the most racist president we've ever had. Wow. The most, you say? Right off the bat, the first black one, most racist ever. What are the chances? <laughs> most racist ever. More, more, would you say, than the 11 who actually owned slaves? Was it? It's like Obama... <laughs> Andrew Jackson, who killed Indians by hand, and then <laughs> it goes goes down from there. Okay. I mean, I feel like Obama just bent over backwards, and, you know, I was with him yesterday over there at the White House. And, uh, <laughs> yes, he finally came through. And we saw him out campaigning today, and, and you know, it... it <laughs> <laughs> that amendment where you can't run for the third term, not a great idea. I mean, when you see these other Democrats, I mean, Obama's like Michael Jordan on a team of clumsy six foot ten white guys. You know, that's... <laughs> but, you know, I, I mean, he, I feel, bent over backwards to not scare them with his blackness. <laughs> And it was never, it was a pre-existing condition. It was just never gonna. <laughs> but you know what? Now that it's almost the end, you know, only two months left, flip the script. Fuck with their head. Yeah. Grow your hair out. That's, <laughs> really. <laughs> I mean, I, I wonder when, you know, Regular fucking suburban white men are going to look at Obama and realize he's one of you. He wears mom jeans. <laughs> he plays golf. He lives with his mother-in-law. He's about to lose his job to a woman. Well, I hope you're ready for Hillary. I mean, if you're not ready for Hillary... <laughs> Please. <laughs> that was a great applause. It was like, this is what we feel, and then what we're obligated to say is because we're fucked. Really, being scared is not the worst thing in the world. I'm fucking scared about this election. You know, I feel like I feel when an x-ray result is coming back. <laughs> I hope I'm not going to die. But, you know, I, I don't trust the American public. I mean, Hillary Clinton is mostly unpopular because she is the most demonized, scrutinized, over-investigated person in the history of this country. She is like a black driver in a white neighborhood, and the Republicans are the cops. They keep pulling her over, and they keep having to let her go. Uh, you know... We hacked her, and she's still not interesting. <laughs> we looked into the emails of the most perverted guy that she knows, and she's married to Bill Clinton. <laughs> you know, what did we find? Okay, she's an overly careful, thoughtful, overly managed, well-connected, centrist politician who never raped anybody. <laughs> you know, there's nothing in those emails, because there was nothing before. Because, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> the hate comes first. You know, it's the idea that there might be something in it. Well, we're not saying she's a witch. <laughs> We're just saying, if, if they won't let us dunk her in water, how do we know for sure? <laughs> That's really the official position of the FBI right now. You know, Trump beats her on the honesty question by like 23 points. This dumb country thinks Donald Trump, the lyingest motherfucker ever, <laughs> is more... You know, my analogy with Hi Hillary is football. I've said this, you know. Is she completely honest? Well... She's, she's deflated a few balls in her time. 
but it's a minor crime and she's a great quarterback. She would be a great president, or at least a good one, not a disastrous one. And I know she's a rotten campaigner. I mean, she campaigns like a hospice nurse. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's got a laugh. Like, you know, <laughs> trying to trick Snow White into eating an apple. I mean, it's... <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't matter. It can't always be exciting. This is not a Coke versus Pepsi election. I have seen those kind of elections. This is not that. This is Coke versus tap water in Flint election. <laughs> they can't all be exciting. I hear this all the time. The Democrats have to excite their base. Okay, it's an election, not your taint. <laughs> we don't always have to be excited. Millennials, there shouldn't have to be a Pokemon in the voting booth <laughs> for you to get involved. It is your future. Don't vote for Gary Johnson, morons. <laughs> Gary Johnson, who's against everything Bernie was for. But Gary Johnson, who couldn't name the city at the center of the Syrian civil war, couldn't name a single foreign leader. And then he said, well, you know what? When I get flustered, my brain freezes up. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> if there's one thing I want in my commander in chief, it's a guy whose brain freezes up when times get tough. I mean, fuck, if you can't vote for Hillary Clinton over two guys who know less about the world than she did when she was 10, it's something about you, not Hillary Clinton. Oh, Jesus. You don't always get your first choice. My first choice was also Bernie Sanders. Of course, there's remember. Okay, but that bus has sailed. I agree. <laughs> Bernie, you know, people want authentic. He was truly authentic. He always looked to me like a guy who worked in a little office where the roof leaked. <laughs> and I am absolutely sure if he became president, it would not have changed. You'd walk into the Oval Office. He'd always be looking for something on his desk. <laughs> <laughs> I have a system. <laughs> An egg salad sandwich would be in there. And a cat. <laughs> the queen would come for a state visit. <laughs> He'd have to move boxes off the couch. To... Here, darling, darling, sit. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> it's our busy season. We. <laughs> Would you like half of an egg salad sandwich? <laughs> but I'm scared. You should be scared too. I know we live in a state that's kind of in the bag, but just in case she wins more by more than ten votes. It would be nice to know that the country and mass by record numbers is against not just Trump, but Trumpism. I mean, this election is a referendum on decency. Decency, ladies and gentlemen. I'm scared. I'm scared because people are stupid. I'm scared because Hillary is not exciting. I'm scared because of sexism. And I'm mostly scared because Democrats never did figure out a way to beat Donald Trump. Every time he went down in the polls, he did it to himself. They don't know the formula. I think we should do what they do in serial killer movies. <laughs> you know, when the cops can't figure out how to find the serial killer, so they get another serial killer <laughs> to work with them. I think that's what we should do. Get another narcissistic billionaire. I'm thinking El Chapo. <laughs> to work with us. But whatever happens, remember, when they go low, we get high.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Facebook. This was a lot of fun. All right. Oh, a standing ovation you shouldn't have. Thank you very much, folks. You were great.